Up until I'd say about roughly a week ago, I had been using Joplin for all my note taking, and Joplin's great, I don't have much negative to say about it, but I decided to migrate over to something different because there might be an easier way to do note taking. And what I decided to try out was VimWiki, and I am really, really happy with VimWiki. So if you don't know, VimWiki is basically a plugin for Vim that'll basically let you make a personal wiki, and yeah, it's just a really neat way to do note taking. So before we just waste too much time doing that, let's go to the GitHub page and just have a look at what it actually is. So there's a lot to cover in here, so we're not going to be going into the syntax today. More about why I'm doing this and just generally how VimWiki actually works. So the big problem with using Joplin is it stores everything in a database. Now, that's fine if you want to use, I think, uh, rsync or sync thing or whatever it is you use to sync between different devices with Joplin. The problem is that there's not really any reason to use a database when all you're storing is plain text files. So wouldn't it be easier just to directly use those plain text files and then you can store them however you want? So if you want to store them with Nextcloud, you can do that. Or you can do it with GitLab. Or you can do it with GitHub. GitHub and GitLab, those aren't really things that make sense when you're directly working with a database. You can store a database on those services, but I wouldn't recommend doing it. There's a lot of problems with doing that. So directly working with plain text files basically opens up your ability to sync between devices to basically however you want to do it. So that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this. The other reason is that it just integrates really well into Vim. Now the problem with Joplin is it's kind of just a glorified file manager that opens files in Vim. There's not really any reason to do that. You might as well just eliminate that extra layer and work directly within Vim. So for the basic syntax, it's pretty straightforward. To do a header, you just do an equal sign, the header, and an equal sign on the end. And then for a dot point, you do an asterisk, and then you write what you want to write. Now, if we go down a bit further, so if you want to do a link between different pages on your wiki, you can do two square brackets, two square brackets, and then put the stuff you want inside of it. I'll show you a better example when I actually go and start working with it, but that's basically how it works. But you don't actually have to do that. If you don't like the VimWiki syntax, you can switch over to Markdown if you want to. I'm using VimWiki syntax myself, but as I said, you don't have to use it if you don't want to. This is a pretty good example of how it actually looks. So it'll do things like syntax highlighting for you, and it makes it really, really easy to actually jump between each of the different wiki pages. So if we go down a bit further, it also supports things like being able to tick a box and basic stuff like that. You also have like programming syntax, really cool stuff that makes it really easy to actually take notes within a terminal application. Now, if you're using base Vim, you're going to want to actually enable some settings. Now, I'm using NeoVim, so I don't have to do this. All of this is enabled by default, but in basic Vim, you have to do set, no compatible, file type plugin on, and syntax on. Okay, so also, you're going to want to actually install the plugin. Now, this is really easy. There's a bunch of different ways described on here. So if you're using Vim packages, you can do it like this. Pathogen, do it like this. I'm using Vimplug, so all I would want to do is go into my Vim config or my, my Neo Vim config in this case, go down to where I'm actually storing my uh, plugin block, so down here, and then we're going to go down to where I've got Vim Wiki. So pretty much all you're going to have to do is copy this line right here into your Vim plug block. So plug apostrophes on both sides, Vim Wiki slash Vim Wiki. Real easy to install, and obviously you're going to want to run plug install, and then you'll have it installed. Now, to actually get into your Vim wiki, you don't have to go directly to the file and do it from there. You can actually jump to your wiki from any other file. Normally, I don't like plugins that add bindings, but the special thing about Vim wiki is that most of the bindings only run when you're actually within a Vim wiki, with the exception, obviously, of the key to actually get into your Vim wiki. So, to get in there, all you're going to have to do is press your leader key and then WW. So, Leader WW, that will jump us in. Now, obviously, we don't need this net true thing here anymore, so let's get rid of that. Now, as you can see, it looks a little bit different than the one on the actual GitHub page because my my theme doesn't actually do proper highlighting for the headers. I need to fix that up, but it's not going to be too difficult to fix. It's probably explained within the actual Vim Wiki help page. So, if we scroll down here, as you can see, when I hover over one of these, they actually change a little bit. So it shows you that this line is actually a link. Any of the lines in my theme that are underlined, those are links. So we don't actually have to just go down with J and K though. We can actually jump directly to those links and we can do that by pressing tab. So tab will jump us to the next link. 
shift tab will jump us to the previous link. Makes perfect sense. And also it is cyclic, which is really nice as well. And then to jump into any of these links, all we do is press enter and that will jump us in. And we can go backwards as well by pressing backspace. Pretty straightforward, I would say. So we go in here and let's say we wanted to go down to, I don't know, this general vlogs one or hardware. Let's go to hardware. Now, as you can see in here, I've got a bunch of dot points in here. And pretty much this is what I use VimWiki for. The main thing I use it for is for video ideas and basically just keeping track of things I'm doing for the channel. So say I want to look at stuff for my podcast. I want to look at the notes I took for, say, Corey's podcast. Pretty much you can see here all the topics I was going to talk about. And then we've got some timestamps for clips I was going to check out. So it works pretty straightforward. Now, as I said, there is other stuff you can do as well. Like you, you can do things like tick boxes and programming stuff, but I don't, I don't typically use that for myself. So I don't really have any examples of that on hand. So if we wanted to actually add a new link in here, it's also really straightforward. Now I like to have them with dot points. Obviously you don't have to have them with dot points if you don't want to, that's just what I like to do. So if we want to add a new link, there's two ways we can do this. So if it is a single word name, all we have to do is say type the name and then just press enter on it and that'll turn it into a link. The problem is that if the name actually has multiple words in it, like let's say for video ideas or video notes, we have to do it a bit differently. So what we have to do is let's say just call it test two. What we actually have to do here is put the square brackets around it and we do that. And now that has just turned it into a link. So if we want to go to that page, all we have to do now is just press enter on it and it will generate the file for us. And that's all we have to do. Now it's actually a file within our Vim wiki and we don't actually have to save the contents in here by ourselves. So if we just type a bunch of stuff in here and then we backspace out, and let's say we just even quit out of our Vim wiki. If we go back into it and then go down to test two, we will notice that all of the content in there has actually been saved. So when you backspace out of any of the files, it automatically does the saving for you. So you don't actually have to worry about saving. That's actually another really convenient thing that this does. So if you ever forget to save, doesn't matter. VimWiki's already done it for you. As long as you obviously don't go colon Q. I don't believe it's gonna try to save if you colon Q out or if you do any of the other methods to quit without saving. As long as you just backspace out, it'll automatically save it for you, which is really, really convenient. If we ever want to delete a wiki file, all we have to do is go leader WD. So leader WD, and then you'll see down the bottom, it'll give you a prompt to delete the file that you're currently in. And then we can just go yes, press enter. It's now deleted that file. Now, obviously the link is still here, so we're gonna to have to go and actually delete the link ourselves. And there we go. Now we've gotten rid of that wiki file. And there's a couple of other bindings you might care about as well. So things like leader WR for renaming the wiki file you're in, leader WS for actually selecting and opening a wiki file, leader WT for selecting and opening in a new tab. Pretty straightforward how it actually works. The other binding I didn't mention just because it's not gonna work on my system is control enter. Control enter will open up the link in a vertical split. Now it won't work on my system because I've got control enter bound to something else. So I've got it bound to actually close all my notifications for like my uh, dunce notifications. So that's not gonna work on my system, but if you don't have it set up like that, then it will work for you. If you ever feel like remapping any of the bindings within VimWiki, the first place I would recommend checking out is the VimWiki mappings help page. So if we go vim-wiki mappings, as you'll see in here, this will basically explain every single function that VimWiki actually has and how to actually remap them. So for example, you've got VimWiki index, you've got VimWiki tab index, VimWiki UI select, VimWiki diary index, and a bunch of other ones in here. So I'm not gonna go through most of these just because I don't really think there's much of a use for most of them. Typically what I normally do is just use the basic movement binding. So I use tab to go to the next link. I use shift tab to go to the previous link. I use enter to actually enter a file and backspace to leave a file. I don't normally have any use for all of the rest of the stuff, but maybe you have some use for it. So one thing I do want to mention is that I don't normally enter my Vim wiki by going into a Vim buffer and then pressing my leader key WW. That's too much work. What I would rather do is jump directly into the file by actually opening up the Vim wiki index file directly. And as you'll see, when we do that, it actually automatically runs the plugin, which is really, really useful. Now, the other thing you might notice is unlike when I opened up my Vim buffer before, 
it didn't automatically open up Netru. Now the way I'm doing this is a little bit of a hack, but it kind of works. So I'll just show you briefly how I'm actually doing that. So if we go into my actual nvim config file again, why can I not spell nvim today? I don't know why. Anyway, so what I'm doing in here is on certain types of files, I'm basically saying set this variable. So set the no net true variable. And that'll be happening on like my Joplin files, on my CalCurse files, on my CalCurse notes files, on VimWiki, and also my git commit messages. Pretty much what this variable is doing is in this function here, so net true on buffer open, this function right here, I'm calling the toggle net true function. And basically what I'm doing is I'm checking if that variable exists, then just don't run the function pretty much. Pretty straightforward how it works. It's a bit of a hack, but you know what? It works well enough. So I'm gonna keep it as it is. And pretty much the reason I'm doing that is because say in like git commit messages, there's really no reason to have a net true buffer there because I'm never gonna be switching over to a separate file. The same is true for my VimWiki as well. If I wanna select a different file within VimWiki, I'm just gonna be doing it through the VimWiki method. So that's pretty much why I'm doing that. Now, all I'm doing to actually have my notes backed up remotely is I've got them within a Git repo. So if we just go have a look at that actual folder, let's just CD into it, VimWiki. As you can see, it is just in a Git repo. So nothing special there. And then I've also got it on my GitHub. So if you ever wanna check out what notes I keep, go over to my GitHub page and pretty much we go into my repo section. I've got my VimWiki right here. So feel free to come check this out if you ever wanna see what sorts of videos I've got coming up or if you wanna make video suggestions or anything like that. Now, you might be saying, well, what about things that you want to be private notes? Well, that's actually really easy to do as well. I haven't got that set up right now, but pretty much the way I can do that is I can just set up a private GitHub repo and then symlink the files over from that repo into my VimWiki and then I can have private files within my VimWiki. You will still see that there's a link there, but you won't actually be able to open up the file that it links to just because you won't have access to the file. So you can still do private files in this as well, and that actually makes it really, really useful. So I would say that's pretty much everything I want to say about VimWiki for today. Obviously, I didn't really go much into the syntax for today, kind of just the very basic basic stuff to get you started and that's kind of all I'm using it for anyway but I would say that VimWiki is a really really good way to actually store your notes because you don't have to be locked into using some very specific method to do remote saving you are working directly within plain text files so you can do whatever it is that you do with Vim in plain text files yes Joplin you work with Vim or you work with whatever your text editor is but the problem with Joplin is it's just this extra layer that doesn't really add much of a benefit because everything that Joplin does, you can just do within VimWiki without having that extra layer of separation there. So I'm gonna keep using VimWiki. I would really recommend it to anyone just starting out. It's not too difficult to convert notes from Markdown over to the VimWiki syntax. And as I said, if you go have a look at the GitHub page for VimWiki, you can just set it to Markdown if you want to and then everything will just work flawlessly. Obviously you have to go and actually set up your links, but besides that, everything just works straight out of the box. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video, but before I go, I wanna thank my patrons. A special thank you goes to Nathan, Andrew Road, Oakley, Ray, and Zilva, and an extra special thank you goes to Tony, who is my newest patron. So if you wanna support the Patreon, then check out my links down below, and also my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel, or just literally anything else on Amazon. Also remember to check out my social links, so my Discord, my Telegram, all that sort of stuff, and my alternate video platforms for my BitTube and my library. Also remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below, and remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. And lastly, remember to check out my podcast, Tech Over Tea, so it's available on YouTube and library, as well as literally anywhere else you can find podcasts. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.